Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need to build a website, Squarespace is a great option for that. They have a ton of different templates and it's really easy to customize it and build the website that you need to make. So if you want to try this out, head on over to squarespace.com slash Matt Day. You can get 10% off your first purchase. What's up guys, Matt Day here, and today's video is gonna be all about the inverse square law. This is something that a lot of people see and they immediately get turned off by it because they see fractions and equations and they're instantly turned away from it because they think it's a lot more complicated than what it really is. So I wanted to make this video because we've been talking about lighting a lot lately and I thought it would be helpful for you guys, whether you're working with flash or natural light, it's all the same. Uh, it's just all about the light fall off. You know, how, dr how drastically that light is gonna change as you get further away from the light source. So what I've got here is uh, basically just a little setup on the wall to show you guys how it works. I've got my Explore 600 here and I've got all of these little pieces of gaffer's tape that I've put on the wall and they're all in one foot increments all the way up to five feet right here at the back. So basically the way this works is the inverse square law is that the intensity of your light is equal to one over the distance squared. And that distance is the distance from your subject to your light source. So as the person moves further and further away, the inverse square law is gonna affect that. So the intensity of the light is equal to one over the distance squared. So at one foot, you're looking at one over one squared. Obviously that's one, so you're getting 100% of that light is automatically right here. It's all, uh, you're getting all of that light source. But if you move the person to two feet, and now it's two feet away, you're looking at one over two squared. So now you're getting one fourth power. So just from one foot over, you're getting drastically less light, basically just moving that person over. But if you continue to move that person over and over and over further away from the light source, the difference isn't gonna be so strong. And you can see a big difference even just from the difference between one and two to two and three. Because at three, you're looking at one over three squared. So one over nine, you're getting one ninth of the power as opposed to you know 100% uh, right here and then a quarter power. And then as you go further and further, one over four, if you're looking at four feet away, you're looking at 1 16th. One over five, you're looking at uh, five feet away, you're getting 1 25th. So it's all really, really basic math. It's nothing complicated. It's just showing you how much light you're losing as you move further away from the light source. So how all of this is useful, it's basically, you know, once you learn it, you don't have to think about it, but you can use it for all sorts of things. Um, a common thing to think about this is whenever you're photographing a group of people. So if I had, you know, two to three people standing right here and one person is one foot away from the light source, the second person is about two feet away and the third person is about three feet away, a lot of that light is gonna be absorbed right here by the first person and then the other two people are gonna get way less light on them. So they're not gonna be lit very evenly. And again, this applies to artificial light, natural light, whatever you're working with. Trying to get the same distance or at least close to the same distance for each subject uh, to the light source that's gonna be key. So if I move this all the way away and everybody was down here at four feet, five feet, six feet, the difference that you're gonna see between four, five, and six is gonna be way less of a difference as opposed to one, two, and three because the closer you are, the faster that light drops off and the faster you lose some of that power. So really, really simple to think about. Uh, again, it's something that a lot of people see and they're immediately turned off by it, but it's really, really simple. Um, another really good way to use this is whenever you're photographing somebody on a white wall. So I've got my buddy Ross here today and I'm gonna take some photos of him on this white wall. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can get some different looks uh, using just the same white wall. Uh, all you have to do is change the distance from the light to your subject and also the light uh, the, the light source to the background as well. So you can kind of get some different looks and change up the background. So if you're working with, you know, just a bare white wall in your house, like what I've got right here, you can get some different looks. It just all depends on light placement. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I've got my friend Ross here and uh, I've got the Explore 600 up on a boom. I've got it kind of directly above where I wanted him to be standing and it's really, really close. You're probably looking at about a foot and a half uh, away from Ross's head. So the first photo, what we're gonna try and do is get this white background, which is probably four, three and a half to four feet behind Ross where he's gonna be standing. So the light fall off compared to right here 
to this distance, it's gonna fall off pretty quick. So we're trying to get something darker than white, something like a dark gray background. That's what we're going for here. So we'll go ahead and shoot the first photo. So Ross, I'll just have you right there up front. And I'm gonna shoot kind of like a really tight portrait, uh, just like a headshot straight on right there. Perfect, one, two, three. Yeah, so we've got a nice naturally uh, darkened background just from changing, uh, you know, how far away Ross is to this, we're gonna be able to change up the background and actually brighten it up a little bit. So still got really nice shadow, uh, especially working this close. Again, that's another thing that light fall off is gonna do is having him this close to the light source you know, you're gonna get a little bit uh, more defined shadows up front. Uh, they're gonna be softer because he's closer to the light source, but it's gonna fall off dramatically. You know, the light on his face is gonna be a lot stronger than on his shoulders, his stomach, whatever, as it gets further and further away. So that's another thing to keep in mind for the inverse square law is whenever you're really close, you know, that light isn't gonna be able to light everything because it's not just falling off, you know, behind them. It's also gonna fall off in all distances away from the actual light source. So uh, what we're gonna do now is actually just have Ross scoot all the way back to the wall. And you're gonna see uh, the, white, the white wall is actually gonna appear a lot uh, brighter because the distance is just about the same from Ross to the light source and then from the wall to the white source. Scooting him back like that, we're gonna have to power up the light just a little bit because of uh, you know the light, the intensity of the light as he moves away, we're gonna have to compensate for that and you know, uh, make it a little bit brighter. But by doing that, because he's so close to the wall, Ross and the wall are gonna be uh, lit up basically the same amount. We were shooting at one 128th power. We'll try a 132nd power and see how this goes. Right there, one, two, three. There we go. So you get completely white wall, a lot harder light as well because he's further away. And you know, the further you are from the light source, the harder that light's gonna be. And I'm gonna save that whole topic for another video because that's another thing to take into consideration with all of this. But basically just scooting Ross back and putting him closer to the wall, the distance between Ross and the wall is so small that you're not gonna see much difference there. But bringing your subject away, you're actually gonna get a much different kind of uh, brightness compared to your subject to the background as well. So if we had the space to do it and uh, you know had complete control over all the light in here, you could actually make this white wall completely black, uh, black by scooting them all the way away from it. Um, but this isn't really a studio space. This is just an empty wall in our house and you would see other things in there as well. But another really easy way to do that is to actually go outside and film uh, or shoot in the evenings and uh, being able to overpower the light out there and get them really close to the light source, you can have everything else fall to just complete black. So that's a really simple thing to do. Uh, I hope this video was helpful just to kind of help you guys see what inverse square law is, how it works, and how you can actually use it to shoot the kind of photos you wanna make. So if you guys have any questions at all, please just let me know. Uh, I'll try to answer anything I can. Uh, big thanks to Ross for lending his help in this video. And uh, again, thank you guys for everything. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.